What is up, guys? We are back with The Freak Show. It's episode three, exclusively on SoundCloud, soon to be on, you know, additional venues. I'm Cyrex, and it is a, well, it's not Friday night anymore, it's Saturday morning, really, 2.01 a.m. as I begin this, and I don't even know what I want to talk about, but maybe let's talk about this playoff game. I only caught some parts of it, but... I mean, wow, were the Cavs really going for it? Like, this is one of those times where they were just all in. Every play that I saw, and mind you, I only really saw much of the first and much of the fourth quarter, but every play I was watching was them just throwing themselves at the ball, throwing themselves in the direction of the ball just to make sure that the Warriors couldn't make it. That big one that... Durant went for, and Kyrie Irving just threw his body at him and blocked. That was that was serious. That was really serious. And I mean, I'm there. They look. They look like they're freaking risking injury. They're fucking around out here risking injury to make it past Game Four. I mean, at at on a, on a serious level, I gotta respect that. They're really trying to stay in the game. I'm just like, you know, I'm worried, but I'm also optimistic of what a quality series this will go down as you know the first couple games they people people will criticize them they probably went down as it was almost a sweep you know one of the sportscasters even had like th- that broom head out like it was going to be a sweep but let me uh let me keep it down some too because i don't want to i don't want to share too many details um my stepdad's inside i'm talking about barely 15 feet away from me inside trying to watch the actual game so I don't want to hit him with too many details rather I don't want him to hear too much of what I'm saying here so I'll just say I mean things are getting you know things are heating up for sure that's uh something that people can agree on unanimously honestly LeBron Kyrie Kevin and the whole gang clearly want to stay in this so I definitely commend their efforts, even though they're not per se who I'm going for. I definitely do enjoy watching the Cavs, and I've definitely enjoyed them during this playoffs run. Um, honestly, before the semifinals, they were exciting me a little bit more than the Warriors were. The Warriors at this time are my favorite team, just because I'm I'm that nerdy guy who, you know, when something works out geometrically and mathematically. In practice, it's really pleasing to my eyes. So, seeing them work like a system like they do, with the passing, with the moving the ball, with the scoring, like, you know, the way they do, the way they have for the past couple of years, that's something that I enjoy a lot. A lot of people say that, you know, I don't like teams, I like athletes. Don't get me wrong, I like some athletes. I definitely enjoy LeBron James, I definitely enjoy Steph Curry. Definitely enjoy Clay Thompson. I mean, definitely enjoy Draymond Green. But, I don't know, I'm more of a teams guy. Because it's a team sport, so it's like, this doesn't work if your team doesn't work. And the Warriors work. So, I truly believe they're going to make it all the way. And, you know, there's no kerfuffles, no um, tomfoolery that I know of anyway that's going to get Draymond Green unfairly suspended for another Game 5. So, I firmly believe that we will uh, we will see what I'm looking for here, basically. Now, if you haven't seen the game, or haven't heard about it, or you just neglected to, because, I mean, chances are you're not going to hear this exactly when I post it, then I really don't know what to tell you. I'm certainly not going to apologize for a spoiler on a sporting event days later. But, I mean, thanks for listening anyway. You know, all my listeners are very much appreciated. Now, much of what I saw was at the Wynwood Brewing Company. You know, a little up north, of course, up in Wynwood, city of Miami. You know, represent 76, sets no limits. And so I'm there with my boy, my boy Louie, and Ariel, his girl, she's my homie too. And so I'm rolling with them. We're rolling together. And... We go to Chef Creole. Now, Chef Creole is, I'm sure you guessed it by now, this Haitian spot in Little Haiti. 
definitely got to say decent food. Definitely decent food. The wings were enjoyable. I mean, they were a little small on the small side, but it was good food. The sauce was decent. The sauce was, I mean, it was like that, that hot that's also got a little bit of tangy to it. So, you know, I definitely appreciate that. I appreciate the flavors they got. There was this one thing that Louis got that one piece of it seemed to involve solely fat. I, tr- I mean, he put one on my plate and I tried it. I didn't enjoy it. I'm not one of those. Uh, I mean, I can appreciate, you know, when the fat is prepared correctly and, you know, well with the actual meat. But I'm not somebody who could just eat fat. I'll admit all day that I've always been a picky eater. You know, I only have a fairly limited palate. I try to expand it as often as I can, but I mean, I got a fairly weak stomach, and I'm not afraid of that. I'm one of those guys that's probably never going to be on those food shows, except for maybe if the foods are vegan. I enjoy those food infomercials, though. The ones that show the power pressure cooker, the power air fryer, the copper chef XL, all those little appliances I mean no those are enjoyable to me the food they cook on those I mean it really convinces me I mean if you're watching that stuff oh the Traeger too the Traeger grill if you're watching those things though you know you're gonna produce what should be a very good meal I mean there's YouTube videos to back it up and it's not by the same people selling it the chef that actually advertises most of those products Eric Thies he has his own YouTube channel where he does his recipe, but he's also a chef, so it makes sense. I mean, most of them, they have a chef and they have a TV host or a television personality. And, I mean, they're entertaining infomercials. I mean, you could totally tell that they're freestyling pretty much all that. They're just going off rip. They got a few things to say about the product and everything in between. All the banter is just made up on the spot. And the TV host, it kind of goes... It can it can range from like you know seeming kind of programmed to just really eccentric and really bubbly, which that that was definitely more enjoyable. But then you also have the chef. The chef is always kind of an eccentric, and that I can enjoy. It's like I'm watching Vice Land, but it's an infomercial. It's like I'm watching Fuck That's Delicious, but instead of Action Bronson, it's Eric Thies. And Eric Thies, I mean, he seems very interesting. He seems like if he had a series, he'd he'd probably be a pretty interesting personality to have behind that series. But watching those shows makes me get back into it's like a certain mode. You call it a mode or a phase, something that I was just about years ago when I would just get bored and flip to the food channel. But then I learned about the cooking channel too, and I mean it seems like the cooking channel has less of the their own originals. But they have also a lot of the old shows from the Food Network. You go on there, you might catch some Good Eats. I caught that episode of Good Eats on Ribs. I just couldn't help but watch. I was mesmerized. I don't even know if I ever want to make ribs on my own. I mean, I probably will, just because I like ribs so much. So it's one of those things that it's like, you have to, you know, at least try to make this thing that you like. But I was just mesmerized by watching it, watching the process of being made, and just imagining myself eating them. <laughs> that was kind of it. like that was kind of euphoric for me. That's just something I enjoy, I guess. There's a lizard here, but I'm not gonna give him too much of my energy. So that's something I enjoy is just watching food shows, and. In addition to the interest of watching the shows, though, I also have this kind of low-key fantasy about having my own show. Or, like, just having my own particular meal that I that I cook and that I'm known for. But I'm also not that passionate about cooking. I'm passionate about eating. But I'm also passionate about eating a lot of the same things, too. You know, I'm down with ribs. I'm down with... Burgers, I'm down with some tacos, down with wings, I'm always down with wings. And it seems to be so simple with wings that like, no place can truly get them entirely wrong. I mean, people want to chastise maybe Hooters, I've seen Hooters get chastised, I love Hooters wings, I've always loved Hooters wings. 
and I get them breaded. Fuck it. I get them breaded. I get them breaded, I get them three mile island, I get ten of them. And I get an order of curly fries. And I get an extra side of the three mile island sauce. Three Mile Island is level four on their five level scale. And I enjoy it. Every single time. There is one store in my local area, I won't say which one though, that the quality is a little bit lesser. Like if you eat it there, you're you know you're pretty solid. But if you don't, you know, you take it to go, which I usually do. So that leads me to just, you know, make the extra drive. I'll make the extra drive. It's about 10 more minutes going, which means it's also 10 more minutes coming. And that's fine by me. I don't even need to take the toll road. Sometimes I do, though. And I just drive there. I put on a few songs, you know. The song that I most... Rather, the the album, actually, or mixtape that I usually associate with that drive to that particular Hooters, the, the one that's my, basically my true local one, and honestly my most original one, is No Name, uh, Telephone. Telephone by No Name is one of the top 10 albums of 2016. I do not care if you disagree with me. That's just... I mean, you have to listen to it. If you haven't heard it, you're not listening. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) On a serious level, though, that's one of the albums that you need to hear. It's one of the albums that you need to listen to a few times. Just let yourself enjoy. Because it's such a fun listen, but it also tugs at your heartstrings, too. Like, that beginning uh, yesterday. The beginning track yesterday. That I picture you so like it was yesterday. Ooh, yes. Yes, no name. Yeah, I mean, I'm not like really into church music all that much, but I feel the vibe of that one so much. It just, it rocks so well. If I mean, if there's one thing that church music has, it's musicality. And honestly, it seems like my time as a band geek really flowed into my taste really like made itself a part of my taste because when some when a beat is like really it's hard to describe but just say it's it's easy to just say really musical you know it's really you know you're really going somewhere with that even that's a little hard to describe but uh, when it just has a feel of the way that musicians play in a symphony or in a in a string quartet or in a gospel group or something like that that feel when it has that feel of it's you know really focusing on making that music creative really focusing on going in a creative direction with all of its aspects and facets that's something really important that's something that really comes through on her album very flawlessly so shout out to no name with that for sure Sunny Duet, that's the second track. That one is a really strong one too because it's more of a transitional track. And the fact that it's just track two, the fact that it's like she gave you this intro that's just going to take you on just like a short little trip to get you to where you need to go to understand where you're going next. That little segue, that's definitely very powerful. It's a, it's a little ditty too. Like it's a duet with the mind. Shout out, with the, shout out to the mind for you know all his work with not only with No Name but also with Mick Jenkins. Definitely done some great stuff there. Those collaborations. Next two are my favorite ones, honestly. Diddy Bop. That Diddy Bop is crazy. No Name has that. Oh, she comes through with that. Those lyrics that like you feel when you as you're listening to them. You just it. You feel like you feel like a kid again. You even if you don't relate to those exact experiences, you can picture them in your head. You can parallel them to yours. Or maybe that's just what I did. It just reminds me of you know just times being young and 
every time I, I sing along to the hook every time that I can. That's The Hook by Cam Obi. I hope I said that right. I sing along to it. This sound like growing out of my clothes. And I mean, I struggle to get through it because I know all the words, but it just tugs on my heartstrings so much every time. Like, I feel like, I almost feel like my voice is going to break, just like emotionally. It's a very strong song. And then hearing Rory's verse too, Rory came hard. I think that's my favorite Rory verse ever. And it just sounded very powerful altogether. That was a very strong and very well-made collaboration between three talented artists and a very talented producer. And then we have All I Need. <sighs> that vibe. You, you can just vibe to that one. And she's coming through, giving you those solid lyrics to that poetic flow. That style that she honestly perfected, it just sounds great. And it's like, it sounds so loose. She can just jump in and jump out at any time. I know that a few reviewers, uh, at least one review anyway, was not too fond of that. But it sounded very, very good. It sounded very good. It was maybe abrupt, but I mean, with what she's talking about, she's talking about all she needs. I mean, needs can change abruptly. And so Xavier Omar comes in with that hook like crazy. That you say you see a way that I cannot see the same. And then it goes, if it's not what I want it, it's just what I need. Oh my goodness, that, that hook. I can feel it. I can feel the energy come through when I'm listening to that hook. It feels very strong and it feels very secure and very understanding and it's just well sung too it just sounds so good uh then you have a couple more actually you know one more playful track one contemplative track reality check is pretty it sounds more playful but it's really more coming of age-ish freedom interlude is definitely more introspective more thinking about thinking about even what the song is going to be about at face value and it just sounds with that production that she really got some producers that understand her sound and understand what sounds good with her and they came through that cask oh that casket pretty so the sound of it is so pretty the production on that is really pretty it has these really short there's really staccato and really bouncy drums the staccato instruments and bouncy drums for the most part but then she's talking about harsh realities that she's facing with how many friends how many people she's known and friends that she has lost due to gang violence in chicago her native town her hometown and how she just hopes not to hear her phone ring that somebody that she cares about has died it's almost like they feel like they know it's gonna happen but they just just hope it's not one of theirs and I mean anybody can just relate to that feeling just because that's just how you feel about people you care about I'll admit right now that I haven't spent that much time I've, I've never really spent much time you know worrying about that level of gang violence Apparently, uh, the area that I'm originally from, Washington Heights, is subject to some of that, but I didn't, I certainly can't say I experienced that. You know, so I just experienced, uh, I mean, Kendall. You know, there's drug dealers, but I don't really see gang activity here. I don't really see, you know, if there's, if there's anything, there's individual gang members or former gang members, but I don't really see flags like that in Kendall. I just don't see them. I must not be encountering whoever might be affiliated here, but I mean, that's their, that's their stuff, not mine. Hopefully they're just protecting theirs and not just out there harming others. At this time, I can't say I have much more to say off that off the top of my head. I'm really going off the top of my head with these episodes so far so I guess uh, for once I'll 
I'll do something. One second. Alright, so, made a gap to diffuse session. So, I'm gonna talk about myself and what I've got going on for once. Haven't really been too present in the uh, stage circuit, even though I wasn't that present to begin with. So I'm trying to make that happen again. But what I've really been working on is hitting the pavement as far as being at the studio and trying to get some tracks mixed. Trying to get enough of my songs going so that I can give you guys a full length project. Or at least a length project, you know. I want to release something truly special. And, I mean, it'll be... It'll definitely be something very enjoyable, very solid, very hip-hop, capture the essence of what hip-hop means to me. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, I guess, on the uh, on the social media. I don't feel like quite saying it right right now, but I'm going to say this much. Coming very, very soon. Like, we're talking Q3. And with that, I'm actually going to call it. So, now you have that information. <laughs> if you like what you're listening to, be sure to follow on SoundCloud, CyrexMC, C-Y-R-E-X-M-C, for more of the Freak Show. I'm also on pretty much all social media, CyrexMC. C Y R E X M C. We're talking SoundCloud. We're talking even Snapchat if you wanna, you know, add me on the snaps. We're talking about Facebook. That's right. I'm even posting. I'm trying to post on Facebook. We are talking about the Instagram. Hit me on the Instagram. I'm around. I will. I will hit you back on the Instagram for sure. Hit me on the Twitter. Shoot me a follow. Twitter is just so easy to use. I am on Musically. Cyrex MC. Like, I'm posting little vlogs there and just little small pieces of content, let's say. Small pieces of content. They're very enjoyable as well, I would say. I am also on Symbol, the Symbol app. That's spelled like C-Y-M-B-A-L, the symbol you play as an instrument. Symbol.fm, or just the Symbol app on iOS and on Android. And I'm sure whatever phone is outside of those two. Follow me on there. I'll just be posting songs. You know, I usually post... I'll be cocky. I post my own songs sometimes, but I also post young artists that I know, young artists that I'm straight with, that I'm cool with, that I'm tight with, that I know. And, I mean, they're putting out solid music. If I post you on there, it's because I like your song. You know, you post a song on there, try it out. You know, it's a good app. It's a little quick thing. This is a little social media. I am also, here's the here's the new one. I'm on The Knock. That's N-O-Q, The Knock. This is a unique app where you don't get to choose what you like. what time you post. You will get randomly knocked. Well, not randomly, but at a certain interval of time. And at the point of the knock, you have two solid minutes, two minutes even, to post a piece of content, either take a picture or make a video or I guess you can make all audio if you just cover the lens or you face you know complete black whatever you want to do so picture video and technically audio too it's a good little platform too because it forces you it's live and spontaneous it forces you to just post a piece of content So, so follow me on there too because I post little random stuff that you probably wouldn't see on other social media because it's just weird, the random stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm weird as is, but spontaneous me is uh, different weird. 
So you'll get to see that on there. Everything is Cyrex MC. All that, all those social media. Thanks again for listening, and I'll get with you on the next one. Once again, I'm Cyrex, and this is the Freak Show. Good night.